Hi guys, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. This looks like one of my standard setup videos but that's just because I have been filming and figured I might as well have the good lighting while we're here. <laughs> so it's currently pretty late on Tuesday evening, you can see my clock up there, it is quarter past 11 at night. I was meant to start this vlog on Sunday because it is the Femme Fantail readathon at the moment which I am taking part in and I wanted to really keep up with my progress on that but to put it simply haven't been having a great time but I'm fine now. Sunday I basically just read I think and in the evening I edited my vlog and caught up on some booktube which I haven't done in a very long time so I was very glad for that. Yesterday I basically just did uni work. We also started planning a very exciting thing for myth take. I was on FaceTime with Charlotte for quite a while. Yeah we were planning, we, we planned a thing, it's very exciting. Cannot announce anything for a couple of weeks yet though. <laughs> And amidst all this I have managed to write the introduction to my dissertation which I wasn't going to do until I'd written the bulk of my thesis but I ended up writing it all pretty much today which was a great feeling because it means that I'm now pretty much halfway through it which is a very strange feeling because this entire time I've been thinking oh my goodness I've got so much to write there's so much to do I've got this deadline now it seems fine I'm almost there. <laughs> I'm honestly just lost when it comes to the normal classes that I'm meant to be having. Stuff that's online just isn't really helping and we don't have any points of contact but we have essays to write on this really damn soon so I'm just trying to gather, I'm trying to do the reading for a start, I keep prioritising my dissertation and just forgetting that I actually have to read the books so that I can write on them. So I'm now just in a mad panic to read everything for university and just praying beyond everything that essays will happen. It does mean that I'm still reading A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ezeki but I'm not going to give you an update on that yet because I haven't progressed too far in it. I am also still reading Tower of Dawn but I'm going to wait until I hit the halfway point update on that because I'm almost there. As for the reading updates I will give you though, yesterday I finished reading A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison and oh my goodness this book. So this is a middle grade and it basically follows three sisters, the Wittishin sisters, who are cursed. They're not allowed to live the island that they live on. The middle child, Betty, is not okay with this. She is quite the adventurer, she's always dreamed of leaving this island. And so to find out that she is literally cursed to not be able to does not agree with her at all. So this story is about whether they can break the curse or not. And it was just so magical. Like it's called A Pinch of Magic but every single word is infused with magic. I was so caught up in this book. I read it on script via ebook and every single time I stepped back into the story I was just flipping through the pages as fast as possible. I had absolutely no problem falling into the story. It was so easy to kind of get on board with everybody's reactions, everybody's attitudes, what was happening. The plot went in quite a few directions that I didn't expect but my favourite thing without a doubt was the sisterly bonds, the relationships. The three Wittishin sisters are just everything, like it felt so authentic and I don't even have siblings and I could just tell that this is how it would be a lot of the time. They were all so different but formed such a good group of people and you could even tell like the distinction between the age gaps of the sisters. It was just such a heartwarming story in terms of that and I really enjoyed reading their dynamic and surprisingly this had some dark areas to it, like a lot of it is about criminals, there's a suicide involved so you know trigger warnings for that but all of that dark stuff is very much offset by the heartwarming family feel behind it and I just I absolutely loved it this is my favorite middle grade this is the first middle grade I've rated five out of five stars I don't yet have a physical copy but Gavin as always is sending me a copy of that and a sprinkle of sorcery so I do plan to get to a sprinkle of sorcery this month before the middle grade monthly live show that he and Jade and Pris all host so hopefully I'll be able to squeeze that one in but oh it was just such a good book and this does actually fit into the Femme Fantail readathon so I have kind of already changed things on my TBR for that but this does meet the challenges to read a middle grade, read a book in a series and to read an author who is new to you so managed to whip off three prompts with that one. And then the other reading update is that I've actually started reading The Grenivere Deception by Kirsten White after so long of saying I will because this is the mythic book of the month for February and March. It's a retelling of Arthurian legend and this again will fit into Femme Fantail. Now I'm only 30 pages into this but I do already have thoughts because I'm just confused by the writing. It's almost as if Kirsten White just didn't know what order to reveal things in because the main character Guinevere is a changeling and so her real identity is a secret but it seems that every single page you're reminded of this so it's almost like there's a secret but you're not allowed it. Oh but are you? But no. 
but no and it just seems to be all out of order it's like I'm understanding what's happening but only after I rearrange it in my head it's a really strange experience I don't understand I'm hoping it will kind of settle as I read more of it because as I said I am only 30 pages in but so far I'm just a little bit apprehensive so um we'll see how this goes this has been getting very mixed opinions in the discord and from the opinions we've seen on twitter so far some people have loved it some people have just not really cared about it at all so i am intrigued to see which side i will land on also hoping to fit assassin's apprentice into femme fantale but i don't know if i will it depends how quickly i can get through this one but my current aim is to have this finished by thursday evening which i don't think will happen because i am at work tomorrow and that will involve reading over 100 pages both tomorrow and Thursday but we shall see because if that happens then I can take Assassin's Apprentice on the train with me because this weekend I'm going to Becca's house so you'll be seeing her towards the end of this vlog. I have grand plans but I do also need to focus on uni and stuff so ah. <laughs> but for now my camera battery is flashing at me so I'm going to go and get ready for bed, curl up and do some more reading I think. Hi guys, this might as well have been a weekend reading vlog because we're now on Friday and I just haven't vlogged anything so I thought I'd do what I've done before where I just kind of chat while getting ready because I do need to leave in about 40 minutes. But yeah, I remember earlier in the week I was saying that I had a few rough days over the weekend and on Monday and I was like, oh it's fine, I'm fine now. Um. <laughs> I lied apparently. On Wednesday I basically had a very very bad panic attack. This panic attack lasted a whole 24 hours which um, if you've ever had a panic attack you'll know how exhausting it is just to have one but no this lasted 24 hours. I had been at work that day and I have this weird thing with my body I don't know what it is specifically yet it's not been diagnosed but I get exhausted really really easily by like physical activity and I also have a lot of pain in my legs but that kicked in and then I just have a lot of anxiety at the minute this is why all this has happened because stress brings out my acne and I also just kind of scratch at my face I don't know why I do it but now I'm just absolutely covered in all these massive sores which I don't even know why I'm trying to cover because it's not makeup's just not going to do anything to these besides make it look worse so yeah, I've just been an anxious mess basically because <sighs> this whole coronavirus situation, like, it's just one of those things you can't avoid. So yes, honestly though, the main thing that's making me anxious is university because this year couldn't have gone worse. Well, this semester could not have gone any worse. We have had to kind of struggle through the strike situation, which again, I do support the teachers for doing that, but it's made everything very very difficult because even though there was stuff online the presentations that I've been looking at haven't been too helpful because they've just been photos or quotes from the book that are out of context so I can't do anything with that and I looked at the essay questions we have to do and none of them make sense to me absolutely none of them so I don't know what to do about that because we've not had anybody to contact and you know I need to start writing them <laughs> really soon. The strikes are finishing today and now they're talking about closing the universities because of the coronavirus so I just don't think we're going to have any classes at all which means that I will have had a total of either four or five classes this entire semester and they've not told us that like any deadlines are changing, they've not told us that any of our assessments are changing at the minute things still stand and we're going to be graded on an absolute disaster of a semester so <laughs> I honestly don't know what they can do at this point because even if they push everything back we're still not being taught it the best I can hope for is that they grade us all under extenuating circumstances and be a bit more lenient because honestly like even just the sheer amount of stress and worry that's come out of all of this is going to make our grades not as good as they're meant to be because like there's been so many days where my work has been affected by my anxiety or for instance yesterday I was meant to finish writing part of my dissertation and I just couldn't because the day before I'd had a panic attack for 24 hours solid and had an absolute pounding headache so I spent all of yesterday asleep. Stuff like that just keeps happening, I keep having to take entire days out to I don't know, just not do anything because it's all a bit too much. So even if they did push back deadlines, it's not going to do anything because it's obviously having a knock-on effect. Like, my dissertation should be written by now and it's just not. So everything at the minute is just getting a bit much. There's also more 
that's going on behind the scenes and it's just flat. <laughs> but once again, I am taking a break from uni work because I am going to Becca's house and we don't have any plans this time actually. I don't know whether I will get any reading done. I should do on the train. Yeah, we don't have any specific plans I think for the first time since I've gone. So I don't really know what will be occurring. Hopefully I'll end up vlogging quite a bit because I have zero footage as it currently stands. But yes, I kind of just wanted to give a whistle stop tour of what had happened because uh, things very quickly went downhill on Wednesday evening and yesterday was just me getting over that really. I will say though there's been quite a few people who have been messaging me um, kind of just through all this and I cannot even express how much that I appreciate that because I am largely homebound already which is kind of ironic because um, the one time I need to leave the house is when there's a pandemic outside but you know. Now the university has basically gone out of the window and everything else I do is indoors. Like all the events I went to was cancelled as well. That was another thing that was stressing me out because I didn't know what was happening. I was meant to be going to BookCon, so America at the end of May and we're just not booking that anymore. Which obviously is a massive like disappointment. I never thought I'd be able to go but apparently this year is not the year either. There's also been lots of events happening this month that have been cancelled and it's weird because I'm not even annoyed about them being cancelled or anything like of course I'm not but it just feels weird because I had something planned for every single day of my life up until June 3rd like I had that many events and stuff that I was doing and classes to attend and work to do and now I don't like I don't have anything the only thing I have is going to work and besides next week I only work one day a week so you know, I went from being here, there and everywhere to barely anywhere <laughs> really quickly. So um, it's, it's a weird situation. I don't really know where this babble was going, but basically that's why I haven't been vlogging this week all too greatly because mental health is crap. <laughs> Along with all the anxiety stuff as well, there's been a lot of the really depressive side which is basically a lot of self-hatred, which is not fun to deal with, but um, I'm somebody who isn't very good at keeping <laughs> any kind of emotion to themselves. I will tell people if there's something wrong, unless it's like really, really bad, then I won't. But because I've been doing that and because I've been, you know, dealing with so many mental health things lately, I've not been wanting to, I've been almost hyper aware of if I've ever mentioned that to anybody because I don't want to be bringing other people down with me. I don't want to load it off on them. I also just don't want to be an inherently negative person, but the sad fact is that I am. And I've just been hyper aware of every single time I've complained or brought my problems to another person. And that in turn has been making things worse in my brain because it will just be a vicious cycle of me thinking I could really do with a friend right now. And then I go and find a friend and even though they say everything's completely fine and I can do these things and it's perfectly all right for me to talk, um, my brain just isn't logical and will not listen to them. And of course my camera battery dies. <laughs> but yeah, I was just saying that mental health isn't logical and no matter how much you argue with yourself, it is always just going to be an endless argument. So uh, that's been a fun time this week. I probably will beat myself up about doing this massive mental health tangent and telling the world and spreading that negativity but <sighs> a lot of people have said to me in the past that they appreciate me babbling about this kind of thing because then they don't feel alone and they understand more and yeah i basically just wanted to give some context behind why i went missing <laughs> not that it's going to be noticeable because you know i only went missing for a matter of two days or something but what I will say is right now I'm doing better than I was I'm not having a 24 hour panic attack so that's something <laughs> everything is very much still there and I think it will be for quite a while just because of the state of everything at the minute I can't see there being any kind of quick remedy to anything honestly I might end up cutting this entire babble out because another thing is that I don't want to contribute to like the panic basically but um 
I don't know. I'm trying to cover up all this on my chin and it's just not happening. But anyway, I'm gonna stop babbling. I don't know whether I'll keep any of this in, but I suppose if you're watching it then I did. <laughs> I'm going to go and pack the rest of my stuff for Becca's and then set off. Hopefully I will have a reading update because I do really want to finish the Guinevere Deception by the end of this week. It's not too long of a book, but it just depends what we end up doing over the weekend. I feel like we're not going to end up doing much, but in the way that that also means we don't do anything productive. So, I suppose you'll find out in whatever my next update will be. Okay, <laughs> I made it to Becca's house. She's currently <laughs> flailing on the floor. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what's going on over here. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? I'm trying to do some artistic B roll. I can't see. There we go. Okay. Okay, take two. Behind the scenes of Becca's vlog. <laughs> <laughs> but I did, in fact, make it. My train journey was. Relatively okay, we did have to swap. I can never have just a straight journey, but it's fine because it wasn't cancelled. So yeah, I did manage to get to page 100 in the Guinevere Deception. Honestly, not feeling it so far. I just, I'm bored. <laughs> um, nothing really is happening, but I am still hoping to finish it this weekend and we are currently about to have a reading session. So I'll see how much further I can get in it. I feel like it won't be too much further because it's pretty slow going, but all I can do is try. <laughs> but yeah, up until now, all we've done is have Indian food and play Mario Kart, which was great because I don't normally get to play Mario Kart with actual people, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time to read. Becca, what are you reading? Assassin's Apprentice. Edling <laughs> log. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in self-isolation. Okay. <laughs> cool. This is what's happening tonight. <laughs> It's now 2am on Sunday. what I would call Saturday, but it's actually Sunday. <laughs> but um, we got a bit carried away, like <laughs> just planning things. Becca started planning videos 
I started planning video ideas and then went into Magical Readathon TBR possibilities because I want multiple options. <laughs> so I'm planning multiple TBRs and then we'll just pick one when the time comes. And now somehow we're planning another thing. This other thing being a readathon with, what was it, 70 prompts? 71. 71 prompts. Um, and it's very specific type. Well, the prompts are just general prompts, but like fitting them in because there's so many of them and because of what it's based off. It's proven interesting. Proven real interesting. Um, but yeah, this is... I just thought I'd actually show you something because we haven't had anything planned and we've literally just played Mario Kart or not much of anything. So this has been this evening for a fair few hours now. I will be heading home tomorrow, in which case I will give you a proper reading update and hopefully we'll have finished quite a bit of subject, which I don't think is going to happen. But a girl can hope and pray and dream. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I'm gonna go and keep planning things. So uh cool. Hi guys, so it's now Sunday evening and I just thought I'd wrap up this vlog. By some miracle, I do actually have a reading update, but most of it was done on the train home, which I am so surprised about because I honestly thought I would have to take over my read of The Guinevere Deception until next week and I just didn't have to do that. So that was quite nice. So I have now finished reading The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. I unfortunately rated this 2 out of 5 stars. I just wasn't bothered and honestly if I wasn't reading this for Myth Take, I probably would have DNF'd this just out of boredom because it was nice, it was okay, but I would have rather have read something else. So I remember saying that in the beginning this just felt like it was completely out of order and that kind of evened itself out but it still just kept hinting towards things that just weren't even close to being answered. So you can tell that this was just a build up to the rest of the series which a lot of people have actually been saying in the discord for this chat so um that's not necessarily a bad thing but at the same time while it is setting up the entire series it just felt oversimplified it felt like everything was laid out to you on a play and nothing really needed explaining because it was all just obvious there wasn't really that much nuance to the characters or anything it was just fairly obvious where the story was going to go even if you don't know the arthurian legend behind this like it's just it's you can tell you can tell exactly where the story is going. I didn't particularly like the romance aspect, if you would call it a romance. I wouldn't. It tried to be, but it was basically because in the story Guinevere is sent to Arthur to be a queen. So obviously they get married and she kind of just decides very quickly that he is a good man because Arthur is meant to be like the one true king. He's meant to be like the nicest king going while also being a really good ruler. And she kind of just meets him sees that he is actually a kind man and a pretty good ruler and then falls in love with him like instantly which I know things can happen quickly but it was just a kind of switch it was really strange and I just found it a really strange dynamic all the way through the book because they kind of apparently cared for each other but I just didn't it didn't feel authentic to me I just didn't believe it I'm sad that I didn't like this one because I haven't ever read a good Arthurian retelling. I haven't read many of them. I know that the Mists of Avalon exist before everybody starts commenting but it, that, that's a big book. But if you do have any recommendations for Arthurian retellings that you do enjoy please let us know because they're quite hard to find. It will at least prove for an interesting conversation because I know in the discord chat there's been a lot of mixed opinions. Most of them have been a lot like me where it's just like Eh, it was okay but some people have also really enjoyed it and we actually chose this book because people kept asking for us to have this as a book of the month so it's interesting to see how people's expectations versus reality situation is at the moment so I don't know what will be happening for the end of month chat for this because we are swapping over to the next book in April and we wanted to do it where we would either have an hour-long twitter chat or an hour-long live show but Charlotte has been unable to read this one and I'm just stressed, not about mistake at all, but just in general and I can't seem to wrap my head around like what would be the best option if it's just me hosting it. But I know if we did a Twitter chat, Charlotte could also be involved with that because our Twitter chats tend to be more general so you can join in if you didn't read the book. Whereas live shows are more likely to go into spoiler territory but I don't know if anything will be happening. I think if anything, it will be a Twitter chat. So if anything, just follow our social media pages. They'll be linked down below for any updates because at the moment I don't know what's happening, but um, yeah. With it being close to the end of March though, we have actually just announced our April and May read for Myth Takes. So our theme 
for April and May is going to be Indian mythology and virtually have a middle grid for this one. So we will be reading Arusha and the End of Time by Rashani Chokshi. This one follows Arusha who is actually kind of living in a museum over summer while her mother does some work and she promises her schoolmates that there is actually a cursed lamp in the museum. Wanting to show off she goes ahead and tries to prove that this lamp is actually cursed but in doing so she accidentally releases the god of destruction. To try and rein in this god of destruction she has to set out on an adventure to find five Pandava brothers I think it is, yes the five Pandava brothers and journey through the kingdom of death. So this sounds very Percy Jackson-esque, I think it is published by it's published by Scholastic but it does have a lot of kind of associations with Rick Riordan and I know for a fact that I will be reading this during May because I'm going to be using this for part of my Believeathon TBR so you do have both April and May to join in with this one if you want to as always we do have discords and social media and everything so again they'll be down below but if you do want to join us for this one then you've got two months here it is. I will also be sharing on the Mythic Twitter page and probably the Instagram actually a graphic of all the prompts that this book will fit into for Believeathon because we do want to kind of make it more accessible and if people are taking part in readathons then it's just a really good way to kind of cross-reference things and take part in everything possible. So I will be making a graphic with all the prompts that this will fit for Believeathon so keep an eye out for that one if you do want to use it for Believeathon. But yes, I'm glad to finally announce this one because we decided on this one a very very long time ago and I also think it will be nice to have a middle grade towards the end of the university year, the academic year, get us into spring, just have a bit of a nicer read. We've not had a middle grade read before so this one is our first. I'm just going to take my hair down because I could not look more rough if I tried. Like these are just not healing and I feel like you can see that I've had a rough week. <laughs> but yes, yeah, speaking of Believeathon, while I was away for the weekend, my Believeathon compendium arrived and I'm very excited about this. So this is basically a tiny paperback compendium that Gavin has created all about Believeathon. So it has the Believeathon map in it. We also have a list of the different prompts and the story behind it. But there are also pages upon pages of recommendations and which prompts they'd suit. And it's just a really well thought out little book. There's also a bit towards the end where Gavin got people on Twitter to say what they love about middle grade and it's just one big conglomeration of people loving books and it's just such a quaint little magical book like it's just I love having physical things for readathons that I'm really invested in. If you're just sat here not knowing what I'm on about when I say Believeathon, it is a middle grade readathon happening in May for two weeks hosted by Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. I'll leave a link to the announcement video down below. We did have one in November that was a month long so this one is a little bit different but it set out like a kind of adventure story to get to the top of the map and I'm very excited to take part and I just love having things like this so very happy about that and I might as well just do a small haul while I'm here because I did also buy some things from Brit's Etsy shop. So I saw that she had this print and while I don't necessarily have wall space at the minute I wanted to get it for when I do because I will be, I will have more room to decorate sometime soon and I just think this is a really nice colour palette and everything and I love watercolour floral things so I decided to get my hands on that one and then I just couldn't resist more of the things so I also have this bookmark which says on a warm spring day I do have the winter and autumn ones so I am just going for the set at this point <laughs> and then I also got a couple of sticker sheets so I have this witchy one and a bookish one of course <laughs> So very, very happy about those. And then while I was at Becker's, because I had actually ordered candles from her website, I was waiting for the Crescent City candle collection release because I've just been saving any candles that I wanted to buy until that because I knew she was releasing them and I was just waiting. But since I was at her house, she just gave them me while I was there because they were ready and it just made sense. <laughs> so I got three this time round and the first one is Pale Daughter, which I have shown before in a video because this one is one of my favourite ones but this is inspired by Never Night and has the blood splatters all the way around. It smells very vanilla -y and is just an absolute delight. Oh, I'm so happy I've got that again. I also got this one which is the chosen one from the Fantasy Tropes collection. It's bright yellow, it has more glitter on the top and this one is a dupe for Yognog from Lush. So the Christmas range that I always yell about, the really shiny gold one called Yognog, it smells like that. It's, oh, I love it so much. And then we have one of the Crescent City ones which is Through Love All Is Possible and is this kind of purpley burgundy colour with 
glitter on top, of course. Oh, this one smells very unique, but I can't pinpoint what it is. But I really, really like it. So yes, I'm very happy to have stocked up my candle collection. I have been burning through them quite considerably. I did have like a whole shelf lined up just of Becca's candles because I absolutely love them. I'm not just saying that because she's my friend. I do generally think they're the best candles I've ever come across from like an independent person. So it makes me very happy that I've got some new ones to replace the rapidly depleting collection that I keep using. <laughs> But yes, I think that's actually it in terms of updates because over the weekend we didn't really do too much which is why I feel like this vlog is going to be fairly short unless it's just me babbling constantly. I haven't started editing it yet so I don't know how much I will have managed to like salvage from all of the updates. It's been one of those weeks where everything's changing every single hour. I do now know that I will not be going back to university um they have emailed us basically saying that it is open like you can go into the buildings but this week onwards so today this is uploaded they're working to transition over to online classes so everything's going to be online from next week onwards and i won't lie i do have a hell of a lot of anxiety around everything to do with uni at the minute like i can't think of it in a good mindset because I genuinely don't think that the amount of things that have gone wrong this year with this semester has just, like, I don't, I don't know how it's going to work. And it's not very often that I can't figure out a way around things or look on the bright side. I just generally don't know what's going to happen because at this point I don't know how we're going to graduate. <laughs> so I just don't know what to do. I've been doing my dissertation but that's about it and I have, as I said earlier this week, I've been having panic attacks that just last hours upon hours and um, I've probably had to take since the start of February at least two weeks worth of what I would call recovery days because I've been panicking so much that it will physically make me unable to work in terms of having a migraine the next day or being too tired or for whatever reason I've had to not do anything. I really it's annoying me that it's such an ongoing thing because I don't want all of my vlogs to be this. I don't want it to be one massive university crisis. Quite frankly, I don't want to be associated with the university anymore. Like, I don't want that to be the content that people are coming here for. Because it's just, it's just failed. I've lost all love for it and I don't know what to do. So, all I can say is that I am not going to university anymore. Um, I probably will still be doing uni work, but I'm, I think I'm just going to not, I'm going to try and not mention it anymore. I don't want my vlogs to be this all the time. I don't want to be this negative all the time. So hopefully I'll manage to do more stuff outside of that. But I just wanted to kind of give you that update because I know that you guys are used to hearing me saying, I'm doing this for uni or I'm doing that for uni or I'm going to uni and that's just not been the case and it won't be the case anymore. So a bit of a drastic turn of events for obvious reasons. I'm not blaming them. Like this, everything that has happened has just been one disaster after another basically and there's no one to specifically blame but it's just mean that I've ended up in a really shit situation. <laughs> Sometimes it's just what happens and something will end up okay eventually is what I'm trying to tell myself. After this vlog, I'm really going to try and not babble about it because this is just too much at this point. <laughs> but with that in mind, I do need to edit this vlog and try and salvage it. So I'm going to wrap it up here. I'm going to go in the bath at some point and then edit this vlog. Next week, I'm going to focus on finishing two of the books I have in progress. So that would be Tower of Dawn and A Tale for the Time Being. But I might also pick up another one because that's apparently just what I do. <laughs> but you'll be seeing that in next week's vlog. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing that. Down in the description box, you'll find information to everything I've mentioned in this video, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you have a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!